and welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Justina Chlat and here are this week's headlines. Unions outrage over video technology. We believe that this money should be spent on safe jobs. Hampshire's unemployment rises for the third month in a row. In sport, find out how Winchester rugby is going back to its grassroots. And what's that coming over the hill? Zombies invade Winchester University. But first, university applications for next year have fallen dramatically. Figures released by UCAS revealed a 9% drop in the number of students applying for places. But what does that mean for universities? Lewis O'Brien explains. If we take a look at the graph, we see in the 1970s the number of students in higher education began to rise. Then in 1998, the Labour Administration introduced tuition fees of £1,000 as well as maintenance loans to entice students from poorer backgrounds into university. This sparked a rise in student numbers and this continued even when the tuition fees rose again to £3,000 a year in 2004. The number continued to surge until 2011 when a record of nearly 2.5 million students were enrolled at universities across the UK. However, with the drop in applications, some universities are at risk. One that could potentially suffer is City University in London, where applications have fallen by a staggering 40%. Then if we look at the danger zone of 20% in this zone, universities may be at risk of cuts in both budgets and staff numbers. However, the University of Winchester remain optimistic. A statement released from the University of Winchester revealed that applications had fallen from this time last year, but the university was hopeful this number would rise. All eyes will be on January 15, 2012, when the UCAS deadline closes and the final number of applications will be revealed. £250,000 has been spent on new technology within the Hampshire County Council, much to the fury of local unions. The new installments allow the public full access to council meetings via, via online streaming. Although in, although in the current economic climate, unions believe the money should have been spent more wisely. Felicity Houston reports. Almost a quarter of a million pounds will be spent by Hampshire County Council on plans to televise their meetings, much like Haringey Council, shown here, already have. It's part of a government bid to increase the transparency of public authorities. Councillor Ken Thornber, leader of Hampshire County Council, said that a time where cuts are having a huge impact on local services, that it's more important than ever that the public themselves be involved in the decision-making process. The council chamber itself cannot accommodate large numbers of people, and the money spent on the technology would also work to replace the current audio system used in meetings. But some feel that the money that would be used could be better spent elsewhere. Well, I think it's a question of priorities, isn't it? We believe that this money should be spent on saving jobs and providing a service. At a time when the council will cut it, they've already cut 1,200 jobs and have closed her homes for the elderly and the short start centres for the under fives. The meetings will be uploaded online for people to watch live or to access later. It's planned to start in January 2012. Felicity Houston, Winchester News Online. Where are jobs being created? That's the question of Labour councillor Jane Frankham, who is concerned at the raise in um, unemployment in Hampshire. The figures have risen for the third month in a row, despite measures being taken by the council to get more people into work. Lee Jarvis has the story. 27,325 people like these at Winchester Job Club are now unemployed in Hampshire. But is Hampshire County Council doing enough to reduce this number? What we're trying to do is to uh, give uh, apprenticeships to around 100 young people in Hampshire. 30% of under 25s are currently unemployed in Hampshire. 5,643 people are unemployed in Southampton. 1,604 people in Eastleigh. While 945 people are unemployed in Winchester. Meanwhile, Labour's councillor at Hampshire County Council, Jane Frankham, expressed her concern at Hampshire's unemployment. She said that she was concerned that the lack of councils promoting small businesses and a lack of jobs being created. So while the council believe they're doing all they can to tackle unemployment, some are still unconvinced. Lee Jarvis, Winchester News Online. Some other news now, and pubs and clubs in Winchester have been awarded the Purple Flag seal of approval. 
The scheme aims to raise the quality and safety of nights out, raising the range of nightlife available and the levels of security. Winchester is one of only 16 purple flag cities. Hampshire County Council's street light upgrade project is to light up Winchester in January next year. The new white lights replace the old orange ones and will have a more natural glow, reducing light pollution in neighbourhoods. They're expected to reduce energy usage by 15% by 2020. Unions have announced that they will urge their members to vote against a new council proposal for a pay cut. This move follows Southampton City Council announcement to cut more than 200 jobs among council workers. Union members will decide on Friday. Now over to Amy Pickering for our sports updates. Amy, what do you have for us this week? Well, I've got some very good news for Winchester Rugby Club, who have had a successful start to their season and have now been awarded funding from Sport England to improve their pitches. Henry Lewin Titt explains more. Winchester Rugby Football Club has been awarded a maximum of £50,000 over a three-year period as part of Sport England's Protecting Playing Field scheme. This funding will help Winchester renovate their pitches and make them more durable in the future. We're delighted to have uh, It is a very busy club. We have, I think we've calculated 35,000 um, uses of this club in the last 12, year to last 12 months, that's including the pitches that we use on the City Council Park there. So it's nice to have some funding to actually restore the pitches to what they need to be to have that sort of wear. A statement from Sports England says, The project will fund the restoration and improvement of three pitches and two training areas. This award will be used to repair the damaged areas, enabling them to be used by the wider community for years to come. The major changes the club has planned are to install an irrigation system, improve drainage and reseed the pitches with a more durable type of grass. If we can get this project right, it'll be a lot more robust and we'll be able to go on expanding and go on helping the other organisations in the community. This money from Sport England has come at exactly the right time when the club on the on the pitches is on its way up, in the clubhouse is on its way up. Henry Lewin Titt for Winchester News Online. In the Blue Square South, Eastley put an end to their poor form at the weekend with a 3-0 win over second-placed Welling United after a string of three defeats in a row. Goals from Port Vale Loney, Michael Green, Richard Gillespie and Graham Montgomery secured all three points for Ian Baird's men. And in ice hockey, the Basingstoke Bison failed to get on the score sheet after Milton Keynes kept out 38 shots during the game. Milton Keynes Lightning came away from Hampshire with a 1-0 win after Lee Jameson finished this chance in front of goal. On Tuesday night, Evo Stick South Premier Division leaders AFC Totten hosted Cambridge City looking to stretch their lead at the top of the table. Mikey Smith was at the game to see if Totten were able to get a result against the visitors. It was the visiting game of City who started a brighter on Tuesday's top of the table clash with Jamie Gold firing the Lily Whites into the lead after 23 minutes. Totten looked to be missing their tallies with Mike Gosney, but the delivery from Nathan Jack for the Totten equaliser was one that Gosney would have been more than happy with himself. Nathan Campbell putting his name on the score sheet. But it was Cambridge who ended the first half with a flourish. Craig Hammond heading home after being teed up by Joey Abs, much to the light of the travelling City fans. And Hammond found the net again just five minutes into the second half. Another well-played header after Sierra Leone international Armand Deans looping cross. FC Tottenham rallied though and did pull a goal back on 66 minutes. Jack turning from provider to scorer to set up a grand slam finish. The Stags came close to equalising in the final minute, but Cambridge held on and now lie just two points below Totten. Mikey Smith for Winchester News Online. And that's all your sport from me this week. But Justina, I hear you've got something scary for us now. Thank you, Amy. Yes, I do indeed. The world of the undead is to be explored by students at Winchester University following the introduction of a new module. The Zomposium is aiming to teach students about the fictional creature's place in popular culture. 
Zombies are invading the University of Winchester this week, with lecturers holding a symposium dedicated to the world of the undead. We think you should study popular culture. If you want to understand society, you don't just look at the best societies produced. You look at all aspects of it, and zombies figure very highly in that at the moment. So that's why we think you should study zombies. Um, there's lots and lots of zombie films coming out. We're showing uh, Dawn of the Dead, uh, which is Zack Snyder's version from 2004. The Zombosium will also look at zombie walks, the most recent of which took place in Brighton last week. The Symposium for Zombies, also known as the Zombosium, will feature discussions, film screenings and lectures delivered from academics across Europe. Tom Morgan there. Before we go, there is just time to tell you about our new games review show. This week, Ewan Kenro has been looking at Batman Arkham City, Worms Crazy Golf and Battlefield 3. Welcome to Win All Games. The big game news this week is the release of action-adventure game Batman Arkham City. Bravo! From fishbait-loving Team 17, welcome to the world of Worms Crazy Golf. And finally, the next big release of October is heavyweight shooter EA's Battlefield 3. For more on that feature, and to check out our award-winning news and sport, don't forget to log on onto our website at www.winall.co.uk. From all of us here, goodbye.